they're still very good business. I mean, if you've got a brand, if you look at the return on tangible assets, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, Coca-Cola or Kraft Heinz or anything, you've got a very good business. It doesn't look as good as it did five or ten years ago. In other words, there, there's two reasons, I think, for that. Uh, one is people are seem to me to be a little more willing to experiment with different diets or foods than they were mean, five or ten years. Some people would say healthy diets, where they won't eat things that are packaged. They think that's bad for them. It's a millennial attitude, too. Yeah. It's a, uh, uh, they won't I'm, buy some of the old brands. There's certainly, that's a factor. I'll, I'll, I think it may even extend beyond millennials to mm-hmm. some degree. People are more, well, they've gotten used to more change in their life generally. And, and, and uh, so I would say that the, that there's a, still a huge loyalty factor, and there's, uh, but it is not as strong as it was five or 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, and secondly, um, there's always been a struggle between the retailer and the brands. I mean, they, uh, you, know, the, you can't, I mean, that's, that's built into the American market system. And I would say that the retailers, and, and, and they've, they've always had private label brands. In some other countries, private label has been much stronger than in the United States, for example. And, and the private label brands are Price below the big brands, and uh, the retailer. Every time a retailer meets up with a packaged goods uh, salesperson, they're arguing for lower prices and better deals. And I would say that their hand uh, becomes stronger as the Costco's and the and the WalMarts and in other countries, this other country, as they become stronger, the struggle can tilt a little bit one way or the other. I think. I think a few years ago, I think Costco dropped Coca-Cola. And that's a real test, if you want to. And, and, and of course, Sam's Club at that time started pouring it on with more Coke and everything. And, and, and that Coca-Cola's a pretty strong brand, so that Costco could decide to do that. Is that, that dynamic between the retailer and the packaged goods companies, is that a pendulum swing that swings back, I or, is so. this a, or is this a new? <laughs> no, and not necessarily. No, I mean you've got these German discounters coming over here now, and uh, each company's got some muscle. And if you've been selling, whether it's Coca-Cola or you know whatever food you may have eaten as a kid or something like that, I mean you're pounding. You want the consumer because you got to win with the consumer in the end. You've got to have a product that's strong enough that the regular retailer has to carry it to some degree. And where their private label, even though it's priced below it, does not draw volume away. And if you take, take Heinz ketchup, it's very, very, very hard to take share away from Heinz ketchup. It's hard to take share away from Philadelphia cream cheese, but I could name some other products which are, well, where it's easier to take yeah, share away. And uh, the consumer is going, the consumer votes every day, and some things are affecting the consumer, like the feeling that th- other things are healthier or something of the sort. Price affects the consumer, uh, but just the prevalence of strength of the retailer can affect the consumer, too. Is that why there's so much pressure for some of these packaged goods companies to get bigger, or for uh, new deals to come in? Like. I, I'm going to take and wrap up with a lot of products, and then I have more heft against the retailers if they try and. Jerk yeah, you me don't. With you don't brands. get if, if 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 Coca-Cola were to buy, uh, they've got the the, one, the world's greatest distribution system, so they can they can push liquids through that. I don't know whether they could push cream of wheat, you know, or something through their their distribution system. Obviously, a great distribution system is is worth an enormous amount. And, and like I say, Coca-Cola has a great one. And Coca-Cola, incidentally, mm-hmm. you know, they're selling 5% more liquids. Uh, they are selling 100 ounces of liquids per capita in the whole world. Seven billion people are drinking a Coca-Cola product, and they're drinking at the rate of 100 ounces a year. That's substantial. Leaves a lot of ounces to go. But, but they are selling more ounces of liquid uh, they've got more, but they've got more brands now. But they are selling than they've ever sold, and it, it grows year by year, and it's growing. And James Quincy is doing a sensational job on that, and first quarter even showed it. But, but the uh, if you've got a brand that's kind of lost out there or something of the sort, it's hard to get shelf space, and, and uh, the retailer is going to stock what will move, and sometimes that involves price and. But what you want to have is a product that a retailer has to have.